You're listening to the LA Football Podcast. What's going on, Los Angeles? Welcome back to the LA Football Show right here on the LA Football Network, live on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Thank you all for tuning in and making us a part of your day. This is your UCLA Bruins segment of the show. What's up, Bruin Nation? Hope everyone is doing well out there. We are deep in the offseason, but we still got plenty to talk about. If you're on radio, you know, on podcast, my co-host Jamal Madden is out for the day. So you're stuck with me for this Bruins segment. I know he's the, the big Bruins guy being the alum, but I'll do my best to carry the torch for today's show. Show is always brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Head to betonline.ag today. Use our promo code Believe. That's B L E A V. It's going to give you a fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Plenty to bet on with Championship Weekend. Plus, all off season, you got basketball, hockey, baseball's firing up again soon. Golf is going on. I love betting on golf. A lot of fun there. Uh, and obviously you can do futures for college and NFL football. It all happens at betonline.ag. Promo code believe telling the guys at the LA Football Network sent you. All right, so your Bruins have had a very good offseason. We've talked about it a lot on our show, our UCLA-specific show, Bruin Bible with Will Decker has got into all the recruiting and all the transfer portal of what's going on in Westwood. It's a exciting team. You know, when this, after, or going into this year, it really felt, and we've talked about this before, but it really felt like this past season was like the Bruins' true year to be dominant. And then it was going to be really hard because of what Lincoln Riley's building just across town with now the jump to the Big Ten. Could they handle it? And I feel so good on right now, what are we, January 27th, 2023, about the direction of this program, how competitive they are, where they are in terms of national prominence, where they are heading to the Big Ten, and where they are being led by Chip Kelly. I mean, what they've been able to do this offseason in the transfer portal in recruiting. Obviously, Dante Moore, the big get at quarterback, who arguably is you know the best incoming freshman at quarterback i know you could talk about malachi nelson just across you know the freeway over there at usc you could talk about arch manning going to texas but dante moore is right up in that conversation he might i think he might be number one we saw what he did in the all-american game winning mvp and even if he doesn't start day one you have a chase garbers who's shown flashes when he's had to come in for DTR. You have a Schley, a Colin Schley transfer, who has a really good arm talent. And, you know, absolutely, I think, could carry the torch and start for a year and have a lot of success in this offense run by Chip Kelly. Oh, and guess what? You also have a Justin Martin, former four-star recruit out of Los Angeles, who threw 13 touchdowns in a game and had a good high school career. Now, you know, has spent a year in this system learning. So you have such a deep quarterback room with so much stuff looking bright for the future of this team. And then you also have at the receiver position, you get a Sturdivant transferred from Cal. You get a Kyle Ford transferred for USC. You're returning a Cam Brown at running back. You get the two transfers from running back. Plus, you know, TJ Harden and Keegan Jones returning. Offensive line, you've got to fill some holes, but you've had some transfers come in there. Defense, your big names are all coming back. You're losing a few, but you're getting Latu back. You're getting Muasu back. You're getting the Murphy Twins back. So I think this team is in a very, very good spot heading into the 2023 season. I'm excited to see it spring ball. I hope they do a true spring game and not a showcase. USC spring game was awesome last year at the Cali. You know, almost 40,000 people there. First one of Lincoln Riley's tenure. We'll obviously see that again this year. I wish Chip Kelly and the Bruins would do that. It's not really how they operate, but I think there's a lot of excitement around this team, even with how the season ended with all the highs of the team and losing to Arizona and then losing in the bowl game to Pitt. I think there's still a lot of excitement, especially with getting a guy like Dante Moore. So today I kind of want to go into, we didn't talk about their schedule much, which was just recently released. And so I want to talk, a little bit about the games I'm most looking forward to. We're not going to do a full breakdown yet and predictions. We're too far away for that. We got to see how things unfold, but I think we can definitely talk about the games that I'm most looking forward to. 
uh, on this roster. So I'll kind of, I'll probably just do top five games. I'm most looking forward to. So if you don't know, we'll just, I'll, I'll really quickly, this, the schedule starts uh, with a home game against coastal Carolina. Interesting matchup there. Carolina, coastal Carolina, that is, has had some, some really good seasons as of late um, and, and put out some great quarterback play and have, have had some fun offenses. So that's a game to watch. Uh, then they travel down to San Diego, the new Sa- Snapdragon Stadium, where they play San Diego State. They come back to the Rose Bowl against North Carolina Central. Then that concludes their out-of-conference schedule. Then they go out to Salt Lake City to play Utah, come back home against Washington State, go up the coast to Corvallis to play Oregon State, stay up north to play Stanford at the farm, come home to play Colorado at the Rose Bowl, head out to Tucson to play the Wildcats, come home to play the Sun Devils, go across town to play USC at the Cali, and they finish the year hosting Cal in what could be, I doubt it, but what could be the last time these two teams play every single year with UCLA going off to uh, the Big Ten. I would assume schedulers will try to keep them playing each year um, just with the history and the rivalry and being the two staples of the UC system. So, but we'll see. It could be a couple year hiatus till they get that figured out. Time will tell. So let's get into my top five of what I'm most looking forward to. And that Cal game, I'll do an honorable mention. I just, it doesn't excite. I feel like maybe just because I didn't grow up watching UCLA Cal. I grew up watching UCLA actually, but I didn't go to UCLA. I'll be honest. I know it's like Berkeley's the original UC, and then the sister school is UCLA. If I'm being honest, I think that's flipped now. UCLA, I think it's kind of the the brother school and Cal's the sister, no disrespect. Both are very, very good educational-wise. Um, but I just think UCLA specifically, athletically, has overtaken that for a while now. So I've never really seen Cal as a true, true rival. It's always been USC. But with everything I said about maybe it's the last year they play every year, um, it is still a rivalry game. The, the students know it. The coaches know it. The kids know it. Um, maybe it's the last time Cal plays at the Rose Bowl for quite some time. So I think there's a lot of interesting and fun storylines. I just, I don't have it in my top five because Cal should be better this year, but they obviously weren't very good last year. Um, all the political drama of off the field, that's done now and behind us. So there's really no storylines with that anymore. Uh, so, you know, there's some interesting things and I'm sure we'll see as the season goes on, maybe it'll get more and ramp up. But as of now, I'll put it as an honorable mention as my top five. So I'm going to start actually with the game at the new SAP Snapdragon Stadium at San Diego State uh, down in the beautiful San Diego. Uh, this is always, you know, San Diego State, good program. One of the kind of the powerhouses in the Mountain West. For those that don't remember, UCLA played San Diego State, was it three years ago? Early in Chip Kelly's tenure at the Rose Bowl. Um, back, I believe Joshua Kelly was still the running back back then. Um, but San Jose came to the Rose Bowl and beat UCLA. Now, obviously, we know there was a lot of rebuilding years in the Chip Kelly, and we're finally past that. But those first two seasons were rough, you know, opening, I think, back to back years against Lincoln Riley in Oklahoma and getting their doors blown off. Uh, San Diego State, though, came and, and won pretty handily at the Rose Bowl. So, this is an opportunity for redemption. I don't think any of the I don't think you'll have any of the same players on the team, obviously with DTR now being gone, it was kind of like the longest tenured guy, but Chip was here. A lot of the coaches were here. San Diego state's been a very, very good program. Like I said, for the mountain West and as the Bruins, this is week two. And last year they had a pretty much cupcake schedule at a conference before getting the PAC 12 play, you know, their week two game was against uh, what a division two or division three opponent wasn't even an FBS opponent. And, and so this now you have coastal Carolina that has a lot of talent that can make some noise. And then you go on the road to San Diego state that I, I, you know, I feel really good about this team. Obviously we'll see how the off season goes in terms of practices and how they look, but this is definitely not, you know, a, a game that's just, Hey, this is a preseason practice game before we get to the meat of our schedule. This is in my opinion, a very challenging game and on the road, as I mentioned, 
So this is going to set the tone for this Bruins season because you lose in week two. There's going to be a lot of chatter in Westwood. Now, I fully believe in Chip Kelly and the staff, but you lose in week two. And even though I think San Jose is a great program, it still should be an absolute win if you want to consider yourself one of the top college football programs in the country, if you want to have a shot at being in that Big 12 title game every single year, or Big 10 title game, excuse me, and if you want to end terms in the Pac-12 right and have a shot at the Rose Bowl, you can't lose in week two, especially to a Mountain West school. So I'm circling that because it's going to be a really important game. Every game is obviously in college football, but it's one that I think if you get that win, it sets you up really nicely then with an easier game in week three and then getting in the Pac-12 uh, play right after that. So be on the lookout for the San Diego State game. Tickets are not cheap either for that 200 bucks to go see that game. Uh, I haven't been to that new stadium yet, but I got to check it out. If anyone has, let me know. I've heard uh, you're not getting a lot of shade there, but hey, we're used to that. The Rose Bowl, you don't get that either. Um, my number, what am I on? Four? Yeah, I've only done one game. So my number four game is going to be, let's see here. I want to look through this. And yeah, I'm going to go Oregon State in week one, two, three, four, five, week six, October 14th, Saturday at Oregon State. Corvallis does not get the respect it deserves. I think Corvallis is one of the hardest places to play in college football. Hardest places. I mean, talk to anyone that's played in the game. I talked Alfred Rowe, former Trojan, does our Salute Detroit podcast. He talked, I mean, he won, they won multiple Rose Bowls when he was there. Talked about one of the hardest places to play is Corvallis. It's like the, the fans are on top of you. They're passionate. They're loud. The weather's always a factor. It's, a, it's not a very big stadium. But they did just renovate it, and the renovations are opening this year. So it will have an expanded attendance. And it's just a tough place to play. And obviously, Oregon State is a very good program. Co-coach of the year up there. And so didn't have to play them last year. UCLA didn't. They get to play them this year. And it's a very, very tough environment. And it'll be a very important game for both teams in their fight for a Pac-12 title. And so I expect this to be a very good game. Both teams have kind of similar identities that run first, smash mouth identity. Um, you know, Oregon State came back against Oregon, if you remember last year, down big, came back down big, not throwing the football. They decided they're like, we're still gonna run. Down three scores, we don't care. We're going to run. And they came back and won that game. Beat Bo Nix in Oregon to knock Oregon out of the Pac-12 title game. So Oregon State's a very good team. And Corvallis is a hard place to play. That's going to be one to watch for if you are a Bruins fan. Number three. At home, October 28th against Colorado. I think it's going to take longer for Coach Sanders, Coach Prime, to make that program a, a, a perennial winner, he'll obviously be improved. I was in Boulder last year for the UCLA-Colorado game and that blowout where Colorado looked good for the opening drive and then UCLA took over and, you know, it was actually already had nine carries, three touchdowns in the first half and didn't play in the second half. They're going to be a, a lot better. I don't personally foresee a turnaround like we saw at USC in Lincoln Riley's first year, going from four wins to 11 wins in a Pac-12 title berth. I think it'll take a little longer, mainly just because we haven't seen Coach Prime at you know the FBS level yet. Uh, cannot say enough great things about what he did down at Jackson State. Cannot say enough great things about how he is as a coach, as a leader, and what he will do with that program but I'm not sure they're going to go from one win to 10 wins in one year. Now we'll see. But that being said, I have this as my number three game because it's coach prime. It's all the talk in, in the off season. It's adding that stigma back to Boulder and to the PAC 12. And we get to have it at the Rose bowl. There's going to be celebrities there. It's going to be the talk of the town. We may get, if, if both teams are winning programs, we may get game day for that just because I think they're going to want to put coach prime and Colorado on game day as much as possible next year. 
or, or uh, Fox Big Noon kickoff. So definitely looking forward to that game. Should be a lot of fun at the Rose Bowl. And uh, it'll be a competitive game because Colorado is going to be a heck of a lot better than they were last year. Like I said, I don't see them necessarily contending for the Pac-12 yet. But UCLA gets no breaks in their conference schedule this year. So it'll certainly be one to watch. Number two, going to go with Utah. At Utah in Salt Lake City, they get them early. It's actually their first Pac-12 game, first conference game of the year, Saturday, September 23rd in Salt Lake. Another very, very hard place to play. Um, and UCLA obviously dominated Utah last year. They looked great against Utah at the Rose Bowl. Uh, would have been basically, I mean, it was a blowout, but it would have been even more of a blowout, at, at least on the scoreboard. They didn't give up that pick six with the last minute of the game or whatever it was. So, but Utah, Cam Risen's coming back. Coaching staff's coming back. They are back-to-back Pac-12 champions. So until they're dethroned, they're the face of the league. With how good USC's looked, with how good Oregon State's looked, with the rise of Colorado, with Oregon and Washington, this is still Utah's conference until otherwise stated. And so I loved what UCLA did against them last year, but can they replicate that? And it comes as the first conference game of the year. So it's going to be a big, big game. Both teams you would hope go into it undefeated. And if UCLA can get that win, that sets them up perfectly for the rest of Pac-12 play and gets them in the right direction to where they want to be in competing for a Pac-12 title. So got to start off on the right foot in conference play. And it starts off tough. Starts off tough. Remember last year, they started off conference play against Colorado. They had three gimme non-conference games, and they essentially had a gimme conference game. Well, this time they have two pretty tough non-conference games, and then you play the champs right off the bat. So they're they're starting off hot, and it should be a lot of fun. Number one, obviously, is USC. Crosstown rivalry, the battle for the victory bell. They won it two years ago in glorious fashion at the Cauley. They lost in heartbreaking fashion last year at the Rose Bowl by three, and they want to get that bell back in USC's home stadium. You know, it's going to be potentially Dante Moore, rookie quarterback against defending Heisman and potential back-to-back Heisman, Caleb Williams. It's Chip versus Lincoln. It should be another fascinating, high-scoring, high-octane gain. You have Kyle Ford, transferred from USC to UCLA. So he's played for USC in four of these games. Now he's playing for UCLA in one. Gary Bryant Jr. is a guy that potentially is going to transfer to UCLA. There's been a lot of talk from USC. So you could potentially have two or three former Trojans on that Bruins team. So tons of storylines we talk about every year. These are brothers. These are friends that grew up. They go to the same high schools. House is divided. It's, I think, the best rivalry in college football because of the proximity and when these teams are good it gets more national prominence as it should last year both being you know ranked highly hopefully this year both ranked highly yet again and this will become in my opinion like the iron bowl like the game with michigan and ohio state like it's going to be tough to reach those levels but it can if we get back to back to back to back years where both of these teams are ranked in the top 10, where both of these teams have prolific quarterbacks, where both of these teams have high-octane offenses that are fun to watch, and both of these teams have high-profile coaches. All of that is true right now, and I think this game is going to be popcorn, get ready to go. It's got to be college game day or big noon kickoff. Hopefully, if both these teams, like we wanted last year, can be undefeated going into this game, it will be Absolutely must watch TV as it is for Bruins fans, even if both teams are not ranked in the top 10, just because it is the crosstown rival. It is the victory bell game. You get up for it no matter what. I think both these coaches have aspirations of, you know, a college football playoff of a national title, but usually number one on that list is beat USC for UCLA or beat UCLA for USC. And that sometimes for them, those players and coaches, that's the most important. And then it's, Pac-12 title. I don't think they would tell you that like openly to the media. I think behind closed doors, that's most important is beating that rival across town. So cannot get better than that. Should be another, another great game. 
Um, and that is my top five list of games I'm looking forward to. It's a tough schedule. Tough schedule. You all see, I mean, Washington State is a solid Pac-12 team. Stanford's going to be better, you would assume. Now, they do have the coaching change. They're losing their star quarterback in Tanner McKee. Arizona is certainly going to be better. You know, they lost their star receiver, transferred to USC, but they still got Delora. Jed Fish is a rising young coach in the Pac-12. Arizona State, you know, gets Dillinger. Uh, Oregon's OC as their new head coach. They're going to be improved. So, I mean, is, there's no easy game. Like, literally the only easy game on the schedule is North Carolina Central, week three. That's it. Then you got to get up and get ready for every single game which you should have to do anyway if you want to be the best you need a schedule that reflects that and if you can get to the end of the dance and be one loss or undefeated resume speaks for itself it's all time we got this is the la football show everyone have a blessed weekend we'll talk to you all next week you're listening to the la football podcast